and welcome back. So at the end of our last video, we navigated to the flow area of setup. And if you missed that part or coming back after a break, all you need to do is click the gear icon in the top right, press setup, and then in the quick find, type in the word flow, and then select flows from the process automation section, and you'll land on this screen. Once you're here, and what we're gonna do in this video is talk about some of the different flow types. So in Salesforce, there's not just one single flow automation type, there's actually several, and you'll need to pick one every time you create a new flow. And that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna press this new flow button, and this is something you're gonna do a lot in your career. And this is how we kick off the process of building a new flow. And so there are six, or sorry, if I could count, there are five main flow types here on the screen. And we're gonna start out with building a screen flow. I wanna just briefly mention these other flow types because they're pretty important and you'll work with them all throughout the course. So the screen flow is just a guided user interface, kind of a wizard. And uh, we can basically show information to users, ask them questions and have them do data entry. It's sort of a guided setup. Um, the record triggered flow is a different type of flow. And this launches automatically when a record is created, updated or deleted. And that launching automatically piece is different than the screen flow, which needs to be launched manually. There's also a scheduled triggered flow. And this is uh, really cool because this can be configured not to run when a specific record is created or updated, but to run at a specific time. So that's a really unique functionality. The platform event triggered flow and auto launch flow are a little bit more in depth and uh, go beyond what I want to cover here. But we will work with both of these in the course and uh, they're both really powerful. So I think the three main ones that I, I hope you remember from this video are the screen flow, the record triggered flow, and the scheduled triggered flow. And if you ever get confused or need some context, these you know short descriptions here are really helpful. So with that said, let us begin by creating our first screen flow together. So I'm gonna select the screen flow option and press create. And you'll see that um, we're now in the Flow Builder Canvas. So congratulations, you've already created your first flow and you've been in the course for, I don't know how many minutes I've been recording, but it's been fast, so good job. <laughs> um, so, you know, we get this message here, it's like saying the toolbox is still here. And the reason it's saying that is because we are in the auto layout functionality of the canvas. And so I guess, let's just talk a little bit more about the canvas. So the canvas is the area here where we build our flows. And you'll see that we have our start and our end, which are showing on the screen because we haven't added anything else. Um, in the auto layout functionality on the canvas, what that means is as we add elements and items to the canvas, Salesforce will actually build the flow uh, for us. And by build, I just mean, um, well, let me show you. So I could add an element here, press plus, and you'll see that we have different elements that we could potentially add to the canvas based on what we were trying to do with our flow. So we have, you know, three main categories. We have interaction elements, logical elements, and then data elements. So if I were to add, I'll just add a create records element. I'm not gonna actually fill this out or really explain it. Um, I'm only trying to get this on the canvas so I can show you what it looks like. But you can see that by adding this element to the canvas here, Salesforce automatically put the element in between start and end. In fact, it put it right where that plus icon used to be. And so that's what the auto layout is, where it's gonna lay out the elements uh, for you. The freeform layout is separate, and I'll select that now. And this is where you um, actually can see the elements all pop up over here in the toolbox on the left-hand side. And this is where we can drag our own elements to the canvas and then order them any way we want. So I'll just, you know, same thing, I'm adding a new element here. No need to understand really what this element is doing. More important is the fact that you can see I added it to the canvas and then I can drag these elements around however I want. Uh, in terms of benefits, I think the auto layout functionality is really helpful for keeping the screen clean. I think the freeform layout is actually a little bit better for understanding flows when you're first getting started. And the reason for that is I really like that all the elements show up over there on the left. Um, I found that when I was a new, uh, new flow builder, that having that list there kind of let me look at it almost as like a checklist. And so if I had a requirement or I was gonna build something, 
I could look at all these ele elements and say like, okay, do I need a screen? Like, nope. Do I need an action? Nope. Do I need a subflow? Nope. And I could kind of go through and, and narrow down what I wanted to work with. And uh, that helped me when I was getting started. But um, feel free to, to choose whatever you like best. I'll probably be in the free form layout in the beginning, just until we get some experience with these different elements and uh, switch to the auto layout towards the end. In the professional setting, I, I often like the auto layout because I'm pretty familiar with the elements and it's really simple to have Salesforce just set up all my elements for me. So those are the basics of adding data elements, logical elements and interaction elements to the canvas and also the basics of the free form and auto layout functionality. Some other things I want to talk about on the canvas before we go to the next video are that we have uh, like undo and redo functionality up here. You can see these two pages stacked, uh, stacked on top of each other. It's kind of like a copy functionality. So if I uh, pressed create records and like duplicate, it would copy and paste that uh, records automatically. Once we save the flow, this little gear icon will light up and we can make some, you know, additional configurations to the flow. And then on the right hand side, you see we have these other um, buttons here. So we have a run, a debug, an activate and a save as. These don't um, become active until we save our flow. So we're actually going to work with this flow. And I'm going to show you how some of these elements work by using the screen flow. So why don't we actually press save and save a uh, save the flow together. And we'll just call this um, our first screen flow. If you don't have any elements on the canvas at all, that's totally fine. So you can see that we give our flow a name and then uh, by pressing tab, Salesforce will automatically fill in the API name of our flow. Every flow has both a label and an API name. There's some advanced functionality here, but we don't need to cover that right now, although we will cover it as we go throughout the course. So I'm going to press save and you'll see that um, because we're in the freeform layout, we, we get this warning and it's just like, hey, the elements you created aren't connected to anything. And that's no problem. Y you can also see that these buttons here became clickable once we saved the flow, as well as the gear icon here, um, which allows us to edit the version properties. Again, that's more uh, information than we need to cover in this video. This is really just about navigating inside the canvas. The final thing I wanna mention while we're here talking about the canvas is down here, kind of in the middle left, we have the ability to select this drag to select where we can select multiple elements. And then if we wanted to duplicate them, we could, for example, to, you know, it's like now we have all three. If we wanted to undo that action, we could just press undo. So it'll first undo the fact that we moved them. And then if we click it again, it will undo the fact that they were created. And then you can actually zoom in and out depending on how big your flow is. And I've seen some very, very, very big flows. So <laughs> we probably won't build anything that big in the course, but just knowing that you can zoom out is helpful. And I believe this button fits um, everything on the canvas to the screen that you're looking at. And so that's it. That's our, our introduction to the canvas. We're gonna continue in the next video by actually building out um, a screen element. We'll add a screen element to the canvas and talk about some functionality uh, behind that. So uh, stay tuned and I will see you there.